Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to start a brand new topic, which is solving ordinary differential equations. So the question here is, what does it mean by solving ordinary differential equations? Well, in some instances, you know how a function is changing. In other words, you know the derivative of a function, and you know what is called an initial condition. You know the value of the function at an initial condition, and the task is, how can I use those pieces of information to trace out the trajectory of the function? In other words, to create that function only knowing its derivative and an initial condition. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be using this derivative specifically, dy dx, and you can see that it's defined in terms of the function. And that what that, what that says is that the derivative at a point is equal to 2 times the function value at that point but we don't know what the function is and the function at 0 is equal to 1 so this is the initial condition and this is the derivative the exact solution that we're after using this derivative in this initial condition is that this y which is e to the 2x and you can see it actually this is the true uh, value for the function so I already traced out the function and this is how it looks and we're going to be using and we're going to be solving this ordinary differential equation to trace out this function and we're going to see our approximation our trajectory that we trace out how close is it to this true value and usually when you're tracing out the function you're trying to get the function value at a future point and we're trying to get the function value at 1 and we're going to use those numerical parameters we're going to do it at 0 0.5 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 and see whether or not 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1 give us any better uh, trajectory or tracing of the function than other uh, h values. Now we're going to use a method called Euler's method, which is a fancy way of just saying linearly extrapolate to find the next point. Um, Euler's method is defined as yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus phi, and this is basically the derivative at i, uh, times h. And uh, what this tells you is, if I have this initial point, y of 0, and I have this equal to 1, if I take this point, yi, and I take the uh, derivative at that point at a defined h, I can figure out what this point is. And if I take this point and its derivative, I can extrapolate linearly and find out what this point is. And if I take uh, this point and its derivative, I can extrapolate to this point and keep doing that. And you're going to find that I will end up with a tracing of the function. And that is the entire idea behind uh, solving an ordinary differential equation using Euler's method. So very, very simple. It's just merely linear extrapolation. Uh, so the question here is, um, if I use different step sizes, will that make a difference? Well, if I use a different step size, say if I use 0.5, and I'm trying to get uh, 1, that means I have 0, and I'm going to, yi initially is going to be 0, I'm going to try to get um, 0.5, so I'm going to use the information here at 0 and its derivative to get what 0.5 is, to, to get this point. Then I'm going to use the information at 0.5, so the y and the derivative, to get 1. So basically, I have two calculations. I'm going to calculate what 0.5 is, use the information of 0.5 to get 1. Well, I can also use a step size of 0.2. Well, if I use a step size of 0.2, that's going to correspond to five different calculations. And the question and the answer is why? Um, because if I have uh, the this point, y of 0, which is 1, I'm going to use it to get y of 0.2 and then uh, use y of 0.2 to get 0.4, then 0.4 to get 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, then 0 0.81. So what if I use a step size of 0.1? Well, if I use a step size of 0.1, that's going to mean I do um, 10 different calculations. The first one is to get what y is at 0.1, then 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way to 1. So the question here is, does that make a difference? Does it make a difference if I jump to 0.5, then jump to 1, or if I went to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, all the way to 1, and which step size is going to give me a more accurate y of 1. So that's basically what we're trying. We're trying to see the effect of the step size and whether or not using smaller step sizes or also corresponds to making more calculations is going to give us a better estimation of y of 1. 
Now you can see here on the right, the, um, the code is very, very simple. It's made up of three parts. So we're going to go through, through those three parts. And the Euler method is merely a sum code. Okay, so the first part is basically we set our integration limits and my initial point is at zero, y of zero, and I'm trying to get y of one. So my integration limits is from zero to one. And I'm gonna define initially my h at 0.5. So the first thing I do is I uh, figure out what are my number of calculations, or in other words, my what are my number of segments? Because this n is going to dictate what my uh, loop is, how many times my loop is going to be um, iterating. So that's depending in terms of xf minus xi divided by h. So xf minus xi, that's going to give us 1. If I divide it by 0.5, for instance, that's going to give us an n equal to 2, which means we're going to loop twice or we're going to do two calculations. And let's see why, because if I have this point and in my initial condition, I'm going to use this point to get what 0.5 is, then use this point to get what 1 is. And this is what this word reflects what my two calculations are. 1 at 0.5, 1 at 1. So what if I use an h of 2? Well, if I use an h of 2, that's going to give me 5, which means I have to loop um, 5 times, which means I'm going to make uh, 5 calculations. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. And one. If I know, if I use h equal one again, as we went uh, through before, it's going to be ten different calculations. So by defining n, you define how many calculations, which defines uh, uh, the loop that you're dealing with. So I'm done with my integration limits and setting my h, and I'm done with uh, calculating uh, the number of calculations and segments. So let's actually go with Euler. So Euler here we have y i plus one. Uh, is equal to yi plus phi times h. And I want to do something just to simplify the code a little bit more. So how about if I do 2 times y here, which is what we define our derivative. Let's actually remove this line of code. That this is an actual sum code. It's only made up of one line of code. So I initialize my y at 1, which is I have here. So my future y is equal to y is equal to 1 plus 2 times 1, which is 2, multiplied by an h of 0.5. So you can see my y at 0.5 is going to be predicted to be equal to 2. Now, if I go to my next step size, uh, or my next iteration, uh, it's going to use that new estimation, this new y, 2, plus uh, 2 times y, which is going to be the derivative at 0.5, multiply by the step size and that will uh, create uh, y of 1 and I'm done and this code here is just display each y here so we have the ability to graph it and compare it to my, our true one here so actually let's go ahead and run the code uh, this one I wanted to output the 0.5 and 1 here I already know what it is at 0 that's my initial condition um, so this is at 19 so I'm gonna say 18 plus i and this is at the seventh column. So if I run this, okay, great. So two and four, and you can see here is the trajectory that it traced. Um, it it kind of captures the kind of the trend of this, but it's a pretty bad approximation actually because you look at all this uh, white space between the two curves, and this is what it approximated a uh, y of one is, which is four, but it's uh, at actually seven. Um, a little bit above seven. So let's actually go ahead and uh, so what I did is this is the error that compares to the true value here and we have 46 percent error by using a step size of 0.5. So what about if I use a step size of 0.2? So I'm going to change this to 0.2. I'm also going to change uh, where it displays this. So I want this way at the 11th so I'm going to change this to 10 and also this is still on column 7 so let's go ahead and run the code um, so run alright great so you can see this is the blue and this is when I use a step size of 0.2 we see that we actually got a much better approximation of well all of the points much better approximation for the entire trajectory and you can find that it went down to 27 percent for the approximation of y of one now if you went and compared the error of the others you're going to find that it actually reduced as well 
So what about if we go a step further and we see at the step size of 0.1? So if I look at the step size of 0.1, I'm going to change this. This is now 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is a column 4. And it's still uh, 10 uh, plus i. Uh, I want it to display from um, starting from here. So all right, perfect. So you can see here is the gray when I use 0.1. When I use 0.1, an even better approximation. You can see as I'm reducing my step size, I'm getting a better and better and better approximation. Um, and the main, this is mainly because um, if you see here, this is the derivative at the first point. So if I take this point and get the derivative at that point, what I'm saying is the derivative at that point is a representation of the derivative along the interval that I'm doing my approximation over. So in other words, if I'm doing a step size of 0.5, and I'm say getting this point, I'm saying the derivative at this point is an, a, a representation of the derivative between 0 and 0.5. And that is a big uh, assumption to make, especially if the uh, function is has curvature. And this function has curvature. And when I did that big leap, when I said from 0 to 0.5, take the derivative at 0 as the representation of that interval, you saw how much error I got. But when I said uh, consider this as the approximation from, say, from 0 to 0.1, that wasn't as much of a stretch. And you can see because of that, we got a much better um, approximation with this uh, gray line. And the reason I'm actually talking about this derivative, because this is one of the main sources of error in terms of the Euler. The Euler says that the point at the initial of the the initial point of the interval, I'm going to take the derivative at that point to be the representation of the entire interval that I'm dealing with. And that is a big uh, assumption to make. And it's an assumption can, that can have a lot of error. And in future lessons, we're going to actually be uh, finding better approximations for this derivative because now we can see the error will come mainly from that. So we're going to find a better approximation from the for this derivative, and we're going to see how does that compare to this Euler method. So we're going to deal with these uh, techniques, which are usually referred to as the improvement on Euler's method. Okay, so to kind of recap what we did in this lesson, in this lesson we introduced solving ordinary differential equations, and that mainly is we have a derivative of a function, and we have an initial condition, and we're going to use those two pieces of information to trace out the function. And we use Euler method to do that, and Euler method is just merely linear extrapolation, and it's just yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus the derivative at that beginning of the interval, the derivative at i, uh, multiplied by h, okay? And we find that the code is very, very simple. We set our integration limits from 0 to 1, and that's basically from the initial point to the point that we're interested in. The uh, step size, we calculate how many uh, segments and calculations we have, because that's going to define my loop. And we found that Euler is just a sum code, and this, compl this mirrors this exactly, y is equal to a y plus the derivative times h. And don't forget to uh, initialize your y here, which is where this initial condition uh, comes into play. Uh, we did this using different step sizes, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. And we saw that actually, as we reduce the step size, we get better and better approximations. And this is mainly because e to the 2x is, has a lot of curvature, which means if I use the steps, if I use the derivative at the initial of the interval, in small intervals, that's fine. We're not going to have a lot of error when we do that. But if I use, say, when 0 0.5, I'm saying from 0 to 0 0.5, the derivative at 0, or y of 0, is my uh, is the representation of that interval. That is a big stretch, OK? So this is why reducing the step size uh, works quite well here, because it kind of reduces the error that you're uh, incurring from using the slope at the beginning of the interval. Okay, so again, like I stated, this is one of the big sources of error that we have in uh, this method. And in the next method, we're going to go through improvements of the Euler method. In other words, improvements on approximating uh, this derivative. Well, this will mark the end of this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.